Yeah, so um, I'll be talking for the next, uh, I guess the next, about the next four hours. I have the, the morning session today. I'm going to be talking about, for the morning, autoplasty, uh, uh, some principles and background of cleft lip and palate management, and then also um, uh, vascular lesions, hemangiomas, and, and vascular tumors. Uh, basically, it'll take the morning to talk about all the topics. They'll all get covered and over the next uh, four hours. We'll have like a 15-minute break in between. And um, the, the timing will just flow that the three topics will just get covered over the next four hours. So we'll see We'll see how the timing overall falls out. Some lectures are longer than others. Some are a little bit shorter. All right, so starting off with the... Um, uh, with the autoplasty, a little background for uh, the ear with the embryology. Um, for some reason, the board still likes to occasionally ask questions regarding this. So it's kind of a topic that you have to just go back to and, and memorize it. Um, okay, so in the first six weeks, we have the um, formation of the uh, mandibular arch in the ear helix, and then you have the hyoid 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 arch with the ear hillux. Um, there's a first branchial arch and a second branchial arch. So this is something that you, it's good to like review, kind of maybe put it on a card and review it a couple of days before the exam just to get it to memorize it for the written exam purposes. They want to ask you about this on the oral examination. Um, basically, the differentiation of the ear begins at about six weeks. Uh, in utero, the first branchial arch uh, forms the tragus, the root of the helix, and the superior portion of the helix. Then the second branchial arch forms the antihelix, the antitragus, and the lobule. So the branchial arch is kind of the uh, sort of the upper half of the ear. If you drew, drew, drew like an oblique line through it, the second branchial arch takes care of the, the uh, lower half of the ear. Uh, the arterial blood supply is from the posterior auricular artery and the superficial temporal artery. Uh, the anterior portion is mostly from perforators from the post-auricular artery. Um, the lymphatic drainage uh, corresponds somewhat to the embryology so that the helix uh, 1, 2, and 3 to the parotid, 4, 5, and 6 to the cervical region. Um, in more recent studies, it's it's been shown that the uh, lymphatic drainage is uh, not quite as uh, predictable as um, written in the uh, in the in the book. Um, there you have the lesser occipital nerve, which supplies the posterior and superior surface of the ear. Uh, the great auricular nerve comes from C two and C three and supplies most of the posterior surface surface and the helix. Uh, mainly areas also on the lobule, okay? Uh, the auricular temporal nerve supplies the, the tragus, the helical root, and the, the superior portion of the helix. Uh, what's important to note of the uh, sensory nerve supply of the ear is that the, the Arnold's nerve supplies the concha, and that's a branch of the, the vagus nerve, which is uh, very different than the other uh, sensory nerves of the ear. Uh, so this is the breakdown of the um, the the, the uh, sensory supply of the ear. What happens is sometimes they'll ask a question about you're doing a regional block on the ear. Uh, you, you go to, to to touch the ear, and that the the, the conscious is still sensitive, and they they'll ask, well, why why is that? And in some form or another, and that with a clinical vignette. So basically, because the 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 Arnold's nerve uh, was not blocked, and that's a and that's because it's not in the field that you that you've done. So you have to do a separate uh, uh, injection of local to, to block that. Okay, so the structures derived from the first branchial arch theoretically will um, drain through the parotid and the infraclavicular nodes, the second branchial arch through the mastoid and infraauricular uh, nodes. So if you happen to get a question about that, you try to keep that in mind may be less likely that they'll ask that because it's kind of controversial in that, you know, it's fine. It's really found that the um, 
that this lymphatic drainage pattern is, is actually pretty unpredictable. Uh, this is a useful diagram that, that maybe just print out, have around to just to review the blood supply, uh, look, look at the lymphatic drainage and the, the uh, sensory um, innervation of the ear. Okay, uh, moving on to uh, craniometrics of the ear. Uh, in the, uh, with the craniometrics, the, the axis of the ear is generally parallel with the nasal bridge, but it's, it's angulated about 15 to 20 degrees. This is relevant when you're doing ear reconstruction and had, uh, trying to decide what orientation to place your framework. Uh, the position of the ear, generally it's the top of the ear is equivalent with the top of the brow. The bottom of the ear generally correlates with the, the level of the columella on the nose. And it's usually positioned uh, uh, 6.5 to 7.5 centimeters posterior to the lateral rim of the orbit. So these are uh, anatomic landmarks that are important for positioning uh, the cartilaginous framework if you're doing a, uh, uh, an ear reconstruction of any type. Um, the size of the ear, generally the size is 5.5 uh, to 7.5 centimeters. So that's the range of kind of the normal height of the ear. The width normally is uh, about three to 4.5 centimeters. In regard to protrusion, uh, this is the, probably the most important parameter here in regard to size in, uh, when you're considering autoplasty is that the uh, cephalo-auricular distance is uh, about 1.5 to two centimeters is the, is the normal range for protrusion of the ear. Um, the auriculocephalic distance, this is very useful for um, when you're doing an autoplasty with the positioning um, after you place your mastardi sutures. This is a very good guideline for how far the, the ear should be um, kind of set from the, um, from, the, uh, from the skull. So the upper third should be in the range of uh, 10 to 12 millimeters. The middle third, approximately 16 to 18 uh, millimeters, and the lower third uh, could be as much as 20 to 22 centimeters. The upper third and middle third uh, distances are probably the most critical as far as getting the uh, the ear to look like it's in a natural position. Okay. Then the um, the depth of the